folks, welcome back for another Feature Friday. I'm your host, Ryan Glover, and this week, we're going to chill out a little bit. So the past few weeks, we've been working on integrations, and uh, I want to say the average length of each episode was at least 45 to 50 minutes. So uh, for this episode, uh, and for my sanity, what we're going to do is dial it back a little bit and look at something a little bit simpler, uh, but nonetheless important when you're building a product. So to catch you folks up, uh, this week I decided to push Command into production, so Command is currently live. Now it's not accessible to the public just yet, uh, I've got a few more things to do over the weekend here before I start uh, inviting some folks into the private beta testing, but it is in production and I'm ready to start getting some people on board and starting to, to see how far this thing can go. Uh, so, something that came up while I was pushing everything to production that I kind of knew about in the back of my head but wasn't actively thinking about uh, was the change or the difference between my development environment and a production environment. So what I mean by that most, most importantly is network failure. So the thing that a lot of developers aren't thinking about when they're in development is, oh, okay, well, I might have an awesome internet connection and things might be really fast, but once I deploy this to a server, that's going to change. And because we're reliant on third-party services to do hosting for us and handle network latency and all that stuff, uh, it's not always in our control how fast or slow things go. Ideally, if we do our jobs properly, it'll be pretty quick, but that's not always the case. So what I want to do is go through a quick demonstration of a problem that I had, and I've, I've solved it at this point, uh, but I kind of want to walk you through uh, how I found the problem as well as how I tested the problem and how I built a solution for it. So. Uh, you'll notice here that I've got the card resolver up uh, in command. So this is when you're looking to view a card inside a command. So if I click on this and I just loaded a card, that query was what just ran. And so what's going on in here is we've got a query to MongoDB. So that's the database I'm using for command. And I'm saying, okay, give me the card from the database with this ID. And then we do a quick uh, validation check. So we say, like, can this user actually access this card, so just a little bit of security. Uh, and then we go through and for the attachments, because every card could potentially have attachments added to it, uh, what I do is I go and I get signed URLs from Amazon S3. So these are URLs that allow a user to access private objects in an Amazon bucket uh, for a short amount of time. So I think on these I've got it for like 15 minutes. So basically when you load something up or you load a card up that has attachments, for 15 minutes, the URLs for those attachments will work. But after that point, that's it. So it's like, a, it's like a temporary lease for data inside of a bucket, which is really nice to have. So that's the, the third step, and then ultimately that card is returned. So what's interesting about this is that those are three different points where the network can either slow down or fail completely. And so what we want to keep in mind when we're building a product is that uh, things aren't always going to go right. There's no way to get around that. Uh, most of the time things should go well, but there's, there are just going to be days where things just break and there's not much you can do about it. And so we want to bake that expectation into our work and into our product. So basically from the, the, the customer side, what they're seeing isn't alarming or it doesn't look like something's unnecessarily broken. And so what I mean by that is if we go back to the browser, we're going to have to look very closely because, again, I'm in my development environment right now, so everything is, you know, it's perfect. So if we look, in this modal, you might have seen it, there was like a little blue dot. And that was my loading indicator saying, like, hey, I'm waiting for some, some data to come in. Now, in a perfect environment, it goes away almost instantaneously. And you probably wouldn't have seen it unless I told you to look for it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're all in the clear. So what we need to do is figure out how do we simulate that. So right now I've kind of, kind of in this position where I've got the, the, the solution implemented. So what I want to do is walk backwards uh, and get rid of it. So what I've got inside of that component is this data and data.loading check. So data is coming from my GraphQL query. So that's, uh, I run the query using Apollo and Apollo stores the response inside of a data object. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, is there a data object and is that data currently loading? And if that's true, then what I do is I show a version of the view card modal body 
with a loading indicator inside of it, which is that little blue dot we saw. So what I want to do first is just take this away and kind of show you what the experience is like just by default without that. Uh, which again, in development mode, it's not really going to be that bad. It's going to be almost instantaneous. And to kind of preface this, this is where I was at when I went into production. I didn't really think much about it. So if we go back, we saw it there for a little bit of a second. So if I click on this, you'll notice how it kind of flashes in. There's nothing buffering that gap. The problem that I realized in production when my, my database query slowed down was that I would just have a blank screen. I wouldn't have anything telling me that like, okay, we're actually trying to fetch data. We're trying to do some work here. There was no feedback for the user. Uh, and so when I added this, that's what I was trying to accomplish. I'm trying to say, okay, we want to give feedback to the user. And so to demonstrate what was happening in production, what I want to do is go back here to the card resolver. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and simulate network failure. So again, network failure means a lot of different stuff, but generally speaking, it means that the server is slow to respond. And so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a slow server or a slow response. So what I'm going to do from this resolver, now this is in uh, GraphQL, and GraphQL is designed to handle a promise that's returned to it. So we're going to use promises here. Uh, this may not be the same case if you're doing uh, traditional REST endpoints or something like that. It, in most cases, this this pattern should work, but uh, if it doesn't or if you're trying it and you can't figure it out, just leave a comment below and I'd, I'd be glad to, to walk you through it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to return a promise from here. And this is very simple. There's not much to this. And this promise is going to take a resolve. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a set timeout. So again, this is our network delay. So we're going to say uh, there's a five second delay, which is never good news. So we're going to say resolve with the card that you found. So walking back through this, the card is what we get up here. So this is what we get from the database. And then going through this process, we build the rest of the data. So again, we get those signed URLs. And then at the end of this, we return that card object. So what this code is doing is it's saying, OK, return a promise. And the thing to remember about promises is that uh, they're long running, meaning you can wait on a promise to resolve or to reject if something goes wrong. And so what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, don't return anything from this promise until this set timeout has completed. So again, this is our simulation of network failure. So we're saying uh, we're going to have a five second delay for whatever reason, and then we're going to resolve or return the card back to you. So if we go ahead and save this, let's keep an eye on our server over here. There we go. Okay, so now if we jump back to the browser, and I'll just give this a refresh. I don't really need to do that. It's just, you know. So now if I click, we'll notice that, uh-oh, something looks wrong. Something's broken. Now we know as the developers that, okay, well, there shouldn't really be anything wrong. It should work, but this is a network failure, so we have a problem. And you'll notice that it doesn't load at all, and I have a feeling I remember why. Oh, undefined is not a promise. Uh-oh. Oh. Because oh. I'm a doofus. I didn't put new in front of it. There you go. So we got to return a new promise. So promise is a constructor function, so we have to actually instantiate it. There we go. All right, let's try this again. See what we get. All right, so we get our blackout screen, which is expected. And let's see if we get our card. There we go. So that was a demonstration of network failure. We had a five second delay in response from our server, which meant that in our UI, our customer is just sitting here like, uh, and for all intents and purposes, this looks broken. This doesn't look good. Um, even though the data eventually shows up, most people are going to be hitting refresh or something before that, that five seconds completes. So the point being that we never want to bet on somebody being patient. More often than not, they're going to be impatient. Uh, and so what we need to do is communicate back to them that, hey, uh, don't worry, everything's okay, we're just, we're waiting, we're trying to get the work done. And so that's what is going on right here. So if we uncomment this, this is going to show us how we're handling that network failure. And again, this is a tiny detail. This isn't really anything that, that takes that long. I think the original solution maybe to be between testing and implementing like 15 minutes. It's not crazy stuff. but 
what we're going to see is that it adds a nice bit of polish to the product. So if I come back, we just saw it there, but let's do a full refresh. All right, so we're going to click. And now nobody wants to see a loading indicator, but it's much better than just that blank screen. So we get our data after a few seconds and everything works. So that's it. Uh, like I said, this was going to be a short one, but I wanted to, to just kind of demonstrate how to, to think about network failure. Just put it in your head like you don't want to uh, always trust the happy path for your product. You want to say like, well, how could this break or how could this go wrong? And then you want to be considerate about things going wrong. So you want to go in and you want to uh, add the details that are going to prevent that stuff being confusing or making your product look like it's broken to a customer. So again, all I did here was I went inside of my query and I'm returning a promise to delay it by a certain amount of time. So I'm returning a promise with a set timeout inside of it set to a certain amount of time. So we'll say, uh, we'll jack this up to 10 seconds and then we'll resolve it. But the idea is that this is a great way to test for latency on your network without having to, you know, disconnect your browser or something like that. And there is, I'll, I'll tip you off to this if you haven't seen it before. So under the network tab inside of uh, Google Chrome, there is this guy, yeah. So this drop down allows you to change the speed of the actual connection in the browser. So uh, typically this is good for page load time more than it is simulating certain things like this uh, because typically we want to assume, okay, somebody has a solid connection. And I mean assume in this context, so the context of making sure that our UI handles network failure properly. So uh, network on our side on the server, not network on the user's side. So if you want to test network on the user's side, that's where this comes in handy. So you're saying, okay, well, if somebody has uh, a fast 3G connection, how fast does my application actually load up in the browser? So that's a slightly different idea, uh, but good to know about if you've never done that. That's a great way to profile your app and just figure out, okay, is it loading as fast as it possibly could? Or am I downloading stuff to the client that I don't actually need to? Uh, so something to keep in mind. Uh, but that is going to do it for me. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, that little tip and you also enjoyed a, a, sh a much shorter uh, feature Friday because I know these have been a little bit long. Uh, so I appreciate uh, those of you that have been watching and hanging in there, and, and hopefully you're learning something. Uh, so with that, uh, if you haven't already, make sure to click the button down below to subscribe and hit the bell just to the side of it if you want to get notifications as soon as these are published. Uh, and for the HMS Beagle, see you next week.